to go with us and bless us and, and uh, open our eyes and ears. Uh, we may own your word tonight and give us the uh, give us the knowledge that we need, um, and the information we need to uh, to help uh, help us as we uh, as we learn more and get to know you better and bring your kingdom here on earth. In the name of Jesus, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Joy. Come on in. Good morning. Did anybody get a chance to begin to watch that documentary on Jerusalem? I did. You did? did. Interesting, huh? Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's, is it still coming on? Yeah, it's still coming on. I think it's the, the, like the fourth or fifth uh, episode. It's called Jerusalem, uh, Faith, City of Faith and fury or something I like that it's a it's on it's on cnn yeah, yeah. it's a special scene so you can um you can just go to the on demand and go oh. to cnn or you can just if you got one of those the way you can just yeah. Start, yeah. i just say jerusalem yeah. and okay. it'll come up okay. yeah okay. um but uh i want to um the reason why you know we get we got into the discussion about it is because it's such a it's a city that has so much historical activity mm -hmm. and the uh the definition of the city the, the definition of jerusalem means the foundation of peace believe it or not and and that city experiences anything but mm -hmm. uh at, at you know historically and so uh, uh, the documentary really just goes on through uh, uh, historically all of the wars that are fought over the city, wars that are fought in the city, those that have tried to possess the city for various reasons. And still today, the, a city that's divided, a region that's divided, and um, it's the the meaning the definition of the city itself is foundation of peace and so and so when we start this study i wanted to just go into that um this whole idea of peace and even ourselves uh, we individually and collectively trying to experience a life that should be a life that experiences peace. And why is it then, if I can be uh, presumptuous, that many of us have to contend for our peace? We have to fight to maintain our peace, whether it's our peace of mind, our peace in our souls, our state of being, uh, peace in our homes, uh, and it can extend out in our families. Our this, in, uh, yeah, it'll work, yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, <laughs> that's all it is, uh. It is that we just we have an adversary that's uh, one of his one one of his main uh, motives is to make sure that we don't experience the kind of peace that was promised us. Now let me go through this. Um, uh, does I'd like to just feel if anyone has a definition. Of peace, do you know what uh, the definition of peace is? And we can definitely say it's, it, it would be wrong to say it's a, a state of absence of conflict. And and that is exactly what it says in the dictionary, right? Yeah. I was gonna say absence of turmoil. <laughs> this is close enough. We know that peace does not mean an absence of conflict. Okay. Which which is the ex which is one of the definitions in the in the dictionary. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. What does it say? It says a, a biblical peace is more than just the absence of conflict. Okay. Or state of rest. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So you're on the same page I'm on. 
No, I just Google it. Okay, the, the, um, that, that, um, that website that came up is the website I'll be teaching from tonight. So you might want to just mark that, okay? Because that's how it's, it looks in Google. But um, Webster's Dictionary defines peace as a state of tranquility or quiet. And the Oxford Dictionary defines peace as the state of being calm or quiet. Most people define peace as the absence of war or conflict. So those are, 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 are basic definitions. Are those, would you ascribe to any of those? De if I ask you, what is peace? What, what would you tell me? If, if, um, if, if my daughter or a younger person asks you, what does peace mean? How would you describe it to them? Tranquility sounds good. Tranquility. Anybody else? You said void of conflict. Void, I mean, no fighting. Right. No fighting. Anybody else want to describe? If, 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 if your, 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 your child or your grandchild or a student were to walk up to you and say, Sir, ma'am, what, what is peace? What does peace mean? My grandmother used to say all the time when we get robbed, she'd say, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and me, as a little boy, I probably would say, well, what does peace mean? <laughs> but as a matter of fact, I'm hoping Sunday my, um, my uh, Sunday school teacher will be here uh, so she can attest to my questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. So, yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any other definition of what, what you would say? What would you say to uh, to Bella? And she said, what is peace? It's being above all the... The, the drama. The drama the, that's all around her. No, 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 no drama. Yeah. No worries. No worries. And it, would, would you guys say that's it in a nutshell? Mm -hmm. Now, that is... Peace as the world gives. And remember, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. Not, basically, I mean, paraphrase, not the world's kind of peace. But I'm leaving you my peace. So if I really want to, and, and this is in any of your studies, when you are studying a certain subject or a certain word, or a certain phrase, biblical interpretation uses a principle called the principle of the first mention or the law of the first mention. And so uh, many times it's important to go back to see when that word is first mentioned and begin your study from that point. And so um, in, in our Bible, uh, biblical peace is, is more than just what we just described. So we would have to go back to um, uh, the Old Testament that has been interpreted in, in Hebrew and then from Hebrew to uh, what we read today. And in the Old Testament, the word peace appears 237 times. Mm -hmm. The word itself and the first mention is Genesis 15 and 15 interesting it says in Genesis 15 and 15 says as for you you shall go to your fathers in peace you shall be buried in a good old age that was Genesis what? 15 and 15. 15, 15 so the Hebrew word for peace Shalom You've heard people greeting Shalom. Mm -hmm. uh, and according to um, Strong's Concordance, the word Shalom or peace means completeness, soundness, wellness. Now that takes on a whole different connotation. Mm -hmm. When you say um, 
I need to have peace. According to shalom, it means completeness, soundness, and and, and wellness or welfare. Uh, it comes from the root, root word a shalom, which means to make amends or to make whole or to make complete. In other words, to have no deficiency. So when I greet you with shalom, what I'm saying is, may you have everything you need. Everything. That you are complete and well and whole. It's not just the absence of chaos. More than that. So, so if I say shalom, what I'm saying is I want you to have everything you need today. Everything. Physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, provision. Everything that you need for today, shalom. Do the Jewish people still use that? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Not just Jewish people, Hebrews. Hebrews. Yeah, um, uh, people who um, who still ascribe to some aspects of Judaism, as well as Christianity, will greet you with shalom. Okay. I have I have many friends um, who who uh, when I call them or uh, talk with them, they'll greet me with shalom or they'll um, uh, say goodbye and say shalom. Uh, um, but um, um, but it's the the essence of the word of what I want for you is not just a peace of mind, not just an absence of drama, but in that absence may it be filled with what you need. So now that that means something different to me than. It does. It, 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 it's it's a deeper meaning. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, when, when when you now when you think about peace in in that context, well, it takes on a more personal uh, thing F for yourself. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, so let's look at that. Let's look at that first, because remember, as believers. We're supposed to be peacemakers. But let's just look at having peace first. Now, when you think about shalom or uh, uh, the definition of, of wellness and wholeness and completeness, how often do you experience that in a day? Just in, in one day, can you say, and I, I, I'm complete. Depends on if I get to be by myself. <laughs> <laughs> right? And even then, that's, you know. <laughs> well, since I don't work anymore, I feel more at peace. Uh, and I, all my needs are met, you know? So you feel, so, so you're saying that in the course of a day, you experience completeness. And wellness. In the course of a day, let's say in the course of 10 hours from, I don't know, 8 to 6. Out of those 10 hours, how many of those hours would you say that you experience completeness, wholeness, and wellness? Why, why are you laughing, Miss Lee? <laughs> <laughs> At least once a day. At least once in that. At least once a day, because when that ten hours, mm -hmm. you're going to feel like you got to get up and go to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While you asleep, huh? You like, yeah, I feel pretty good now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I would say uh, when I first wake up in the morning, because that's usually when I do uh, Bible study. Bible study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, and I, you know, I do that in the 
in bed when I first get up. But then once I put my feet on the ground, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> once you start the day, huh? After you, uh, as long as it's just you and Jesus, yeah. I feel complete. Yeah. Yeah. I feel whole. I feel like I have everything I need in his presence. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then once I have to deal with uh, things. Because things come at you. The demands. Yeah, the de come at, you know, they mug you. They do. <laughs> you know? they, they come at you from every, every direction. Designed to make you in this case of this word, incomplete. Mm -hmm. Now, so so now, so now I have to ask the question: Can you still have this kind of peace in the middle of chaos? Can you still feel complete and whole and well, even though? Why, why are you laughing? <laughs> I said, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the middle of the bombardment of the demands that, that come after your, your peace of mind, your state of being. Because truth be told, I mean, like you said, after, after that first couple of hours of the day, the, the, the chaos begins. The drama unfolds, and the fires rage that you have to put out through the day. So it's really not the absence of conflict, because we're going to have it. and And I'll show you when we, if we get into this. Jesus said, "In this life, you will have." trouble and then he says but be of good courage for i have overcome the world and then he goes into this course about peace that he leaves us it's like a focal point it's like it reminds me of a ballerina when she's spinning around you it's a, a focal point to keep coming back to mm. you know mm -hmm. if you can get to that focal point then you can reach that peace but sometimes you know people will come at you and yeah. You know, I, I have uh, you know, seen, uh, seen occasions where, you know, my peace was disrupted, disrupted by somebody else's peace being disrupted. disrupted. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your peace is disrupted because somebody else's peace disrupted. Yeah, I know that one. I know that one. Yes, I do. I do. I do. I do. It's like that misery en enjoys company kind of thing. And, yeah, if I'm I'm miserable, then I'm gonna make you miserable. If I got chaos going on, I'm gonna pass some off to you too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of times, you know, the uh, you and the individual, you know, two people could be can be at peace. You know, they're enjoying peace, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, when this other person's peace is disrupted, you know, then. There goes, like you said, the chaos. Chaos begins. But you try to stay peaceful during the disruption. You, know, you try to keep your peace. And sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of nice when the power goes out. When the, po when the power <laughs> in the house goes out? Because the phones are dead. <laughs> you can't call me. The TV's off. The, TV's <laughs> the phone is <laughs> dead. <laughs> It's, it's quiet. Yeah, my phone dies too. I don't have internet because the Comcast is down because the power's out. They can't contact me, and I just sit there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have battery-operated fans, so I stay cool. Nice. Because mm -hmm. then my piece is really destroyed. <laughs> and I have enough to keep me busy, and I just sit there. That's amazing. As That's long as my hands are busy, it's peaceful. Then it's peaceful. Because. I stab things a thousand times when I'm doing needlepoint. Oh, we do. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, just as peaceful as peaceful. As you want to be, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, okay. 
Because so let me let me finish this thought about um, the definition, because in the Greek, the word for peace is irene, e e i r e n e, irene, and um, it means uh, one. It means quietness or being at one uh, what we would call centered okay. um, it also comes from a root word that means to tie together so when Paul says grace and peace he's saying uh, of course grace which is caris which is um, uh, one of the definition is divine influence upon the heart and peace that you're able to tie it all together and be centered. Okay, uh, that focus. Um, um, the the word that is used as peace, be still. That's a different Greek word. That's not Irene. Okay. That is a different Greek word, uh, which means to be silent. Okay. And uh, yes. What is the Greek word for the one in verse in John fifteen? I mean John fourteen, verse twenty seven. John fourteen, verse twenty seven. Mm -hmm. What is? Uh, how does it read? Peace I leave with you. My mm -hmm. peace I give unto you. Yeah. And not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled, troubled, neither let it be afraid. That is the irene. That is the, the oneness. That is the completeness. Uh, it's still from that same Hebrewish idea of being complete and well and whole. In the Greek, they took it to mean one, to be uh, centered, um, to be tied together. Okay, because if, if, if you fragment it and you're all over the place, you know, internally, mm -hmm. you scattered. know, it's, it's, right, scattered internally, emotions everywhere, thoughts everywhere, whereas Irene means to bring all that together and, and make it whole and complete and one, tying it all together, being centered. So this this tells me then. I don't, I don't know, maybe we can discuss this, that our peace now should not be contingent on external stimuli. That's what he meant when he said, not as the world. Right, right. Because the world's peace is contingent on external stimuli, mm -hmm. which will put you, you know, if everything's quiet externally, then internally, I'm good. You just don't last long. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> and, 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 and if there's no drama, I'm good. If I'm not arguing with nobody or nobody's trying to argue with me or coming at me with all these kind of things, I'm good. That's external. So what, what we have to now discover is how can I experience the peace of the Bible? regardless of what's going on around me. And in some cases, what's going on in me. Because if we let some of these external things become sensory input, you know, I, I've used these terms before, uh, Something that appeals to our senses, something that we see or something that we hear or something that's being said to to affect our internal peace. Because some people can say some things that are, that are just. <laughs> You'll be like, what? Knock you out of your chair. And all that was tied together on the inside. It just comes loose. Mm. So now we have to battle or contend for this wholeness and completeness internally, regardless 
of what goes on externally. And I'm here to tell you, <clears throat> even though I'm teaching this, I have not mastered this at all. I'm, um, um, April says I've, 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 sometimes I do well. She says I do better than her. Do you think we're supposed to be mastered in the way that we think mastering is? To where we can handle it, right? Right. I was getting, I was getting there, Miss Joy. I was getting there. <laughs> yeah, I just saw it. Yeah. Because this is this, this thing, this subject is, is, a, is a subject very, very close to my my experience right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, because peace is a fruit of the spirit. And the kind of peace that we need to experience day in, day out, every hour, every minute, has to come from Holy Spirit. If we try to um, manage it or master it ourselves, uh, we're going to find ourselves wanting because we're going to be pushed to the limit. Because that's just how the enemy does. And your flesh will do it too. Your flesh will push you to the to the limit of your your peace. And and which is amazing because that's you against you. I mean when you really think about it, it's your flesh pushing you to the limit of your peace. Would it be safe to say that sometimes we upset our own peace? Yeah. I don't know if it's safe to say, but yeah, we can. It's true. It's true. I like to I don't know if it's safe to say, but it's true. How many times have we upset ourselves? Upset our own apple cart? Um, because we've allowed our flesh to dictate something that Holy Spirit is pushing against and saying, no, 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 or, 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 or you know, let me handle it. And then we, we yield to our flesh and peace goes out the door. How many times have we, now I know, I, I know that many times we've even gone to a point of wanting to tell somebody, oh, because our peace has been so disrupted that uh, we've allowed anxiety and uh, uh, stress, anger, and we just can't pull it together. We can't tie it together. Do you think that everybody even wants it? The peace? You know, you know, Miss Joy. I believe there are some people who thrive on chaos. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. they're there in deception, but I, I have to agree with you. They, 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 they right? They are, but they, if if the, if it's nothing chaotic going on, they are unhappy. It's like their validation for existence or something. Right. They need the uh, the adrenaline or like like um, mm -hmm. IO taught it so well they need that um dopamine release mm -hmm. for some people they get great satisfaction in being contentious mm -hmm. i'm not talking about them people oh okay i'm talking about the people who, who haven't that never really the environment that they were they were brought up in it was so strife filled they have never realized that's not normal yeah Oh, that's a whole type of okay. So that means, yeah. So they haven't experienced external or internal peace. They don't, know they don't even know what that looks like. That's right. that's right. they, they don't know what that feels like. They, and, and it probably frightens them yes. when it's like that. It's, it's probably uncomfortable. Yeah. It's like they use something rolling around. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait, something's going to so, happen. Right. Yeah, I'll say in the prison, I used to say, something's getting ready to go down. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Right, the other shoe yeah, is yeah. going to drop, yeah. or they don't trust the tranquility or the peace. Right. They just know that somewhere along the line, this cannot last. I did that. I don't even think these people have that awareness. 
they're, they're not even aware of that of what it, of of. You must have peace. grown up in a very peaceful setting. Me? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there were times. <laughs> I mean, we. There are people I met them, little kids, and a, this is what I concluded: when the room is absolutely still, they go into a panic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, says, you know, and I remember one little boy, I said, uh, I was a little kid, it was like, I couldn't have been more than third grade, and I made a statement of, okay, let's see if, if we can, he did something to another student that was, that was supposed to help the student. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, now let's see if we can do that without any strife. And he looked at me and he said, "What strife?" Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, "I said to him, how would you like for someone to hand you the book?" And for the, it it just he couldn't. He couldn't figure. He couldn't figure it out. How how would you want someone to treat you? That's what I was saying. But I was keep that yes. That was a joke, but I made it specific as to how he was Getting passing the book. the book to his neighbor. Yes, yes. How would you like for someone to give you that book? And you couldn't even think of a better way. It, it just never... And it was genuine. <clears throat> yes. It, he, you could tell, I, could, I, had to, I concluded, I don't know if I was right or not, correct or not, but I concluded, oh, in your environment, everything is done with that. Yeah. That and, strikeful attitude. And it's... it's, it's you're probably so and so that that when they get to a point of peace they like mr henry said they fall asleep <laughs> I've, I've i've been around some uh little humans <laughs> that when it is a peaceful environment they can't handle it they just go to sleep All the time, yeah. internally. Yeah, yeah. Nothing going on on the outside, but just internally, the the chaos and the strife and the contention in their minds and in their emotions is so continuous that when they are forced to be still, they just fall asleep. Hmm. Ooh, that is their peace. That, that that is. Now everybody else's peace. <laughs> now, now, now imagine, imagine that level of peace that you can only experience when you're asleep. That's kind of where we are now. I, I, I know of a person that went through great lengths to experience that kind of peace. Name is Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Sure he used to say, "All I want to do is sleep." And even when he would sleep, his dreams would be so full of chaos that 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 he wanted to even go into a deeper sleep, mm -hmm. so he wouldn't experience that mm -hmm. be, beyond dreaming. And that's why he would um, ask for the propofol, because it would put him in that state. Can you imagine mm -hmm. having a life so full of chaos and busyness that even sleep cannot bring you rest or peace? Wow. You just cannot pull it together. So you're not well. You're not complete. You're not whole. And you have to put on the happy face, the, the clown face with the smile, and dance for the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That would be exhausting. Wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. And you still can't rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wake up tired. 
Wake up, yeah. You wake up <laughs> if if at all. If, I mean, if you even go to sleep. But yeah, when yeah. you do get up, you wake up tired. Now that now 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 that's the extreme. Mm -hmm. But many of us go through that daily. So now <clears throat> my my challenge with this Bible study is to discover what real biblical peace is. And see if we can realize it in our lives. Where is that place of feeling complete or feeling whole or well or that you're not deficient? That you have everything you need. It's a hard question to answer. Okay. Someone said that that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. So... <clears throat> I'll let you think about it for just another few few seconds, but I do have an answer. I do have an answer. But is peace a feeling? Um, it affects it, but is peace a feeling? It is. I, I have to look at my chart, but in in the area in the realm of psychology, I believe it is. It's, I believe it is a feeling based on the emotion, and the emotion is, watch this, trust. Mm. And for us, as believers, we have to add faith. Faith helps produce trust. And therefore, because we trust in the Lord, we have peace. For the Lord is our shepherd. And there's a translation that says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. Psalm 23, I believe that's either the NIV or the, the uh, I believe it might be the um, Amplified. Psalm 23 reads, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. So because the Lord is my shepherd, shalom. Uh, I am complete. And that takes faith. It's like when you're standing on God's word for a particular thing that you're believing in. You know, <clears throat> and you just, get, <clears throat> you just have absolute faith in what the, the Bible says. And you stand on that, that verse or that word. And you, get a, you have complete faith in it. You have complete faith in the word of God. Uh huh, and it, it allows you to trust him, right? Exactly. Hmm. Let's look at something. The um, so the peace comes from God, right? Um, and we have this scripture that we always read in Philippians four that says, "Be anxious for nothing." But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So this, uh, this formula says 
I have to when, when I'm when I'm presented with chaos that makes me anxious or that makes me undone fragmented then I need to pray and and make my request to God I need relief from this whatever it is that is upsetting my apple cart even if it's me, God, I, I, I need peace. I need you to handle this. He says, make your request known to God uh, w with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, that you're... Because see, now it's not God I need. It's thank you, Lord, because you're going to provide it. It's a whole shift in the way you approach in prayer. Because now you're using faith to say it's already done. So you make your requests known, but you make it known with thanksgiving. And then you leave it there and allow the peace of God now to act as a um, the the the, the uh, idea is that of a goalie in a soccer game or a um, hockey game, a goalie that protects the goal, and in this case, that is your soul. And the peace of God acts like a goalie. Protecting things from without and things from within so that you remain centered. And whatever the Lord's will is, you're okay with that. You're at peace with that. You're centered. You're well. You're, you're complete. And, and, and that takes great faith. I'm 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 sorry, y'all, and I'm you know, um, I could get someone to uh, that's more of a uh, faith teacher that that teaches it a little better than I do, um, because I, I've grown to just I just live it, and and for some reason. Um, my my teaching is more on about love, you know. But I have some friends who, man, they can teach faith like you would not believe. And it's not like I can't teach it, but they can go into some depths and some revelation that um, that I just haven't been given yet. Because I've had to just live by faith. In so many different scenarios that many times when I'm presented with chaos or opposition, um, I just get to a point, a posture where I just believe God and that's just that. And I believe his word. And, and and that's just that. And I don't know how to sometimes I don't know how to teach that. I just try to model it and, and, and live it in front of, you know, people. But in order to get to a point when chaos is all around you, when when people are seeking to destroy your very life, and to get to a point where you just trust God. Um, and you're at peace in that moment. Many of you, some of you here have seen me exhibit that. I don't know how that, I, I don't, I don't. That is the peace that surpasses understanding. Because I don't understand it. I don't understand it while I was in it. I don't understand it after the fact. I'm like, how can I remain so together 
in the middle of that situation or that circumstance? How can I remain so together when the classroom is being tore up? <laughs> <laughs> You know, kid come in, flip over desks, and just yeah, just ram everybody. All the kids are screaming. Ah, the teachers got the back. Ah, calling, and I'm like, hey, it's okay. Hey, hey, bro, come on, let's let's go outside. Let's go for a walk. Miss Lee, you seen me do that? I don't know how I do that, Miss Lee. You don't. That's the whole thing. Right, 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 yeah. right. <laughs> Right. And I don't understand. Oh, you know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. And I don't understand it. And people say, what'd you do? Can you write it down? Can we write? I... Hey, yo gets a good mind. <laughs> They'd be like, go see Mr. David. Then this kid done told the class up. And, and on the way, just, you know, running in and out of everybody else's classroom, on the way to see Mr. David. Get to Mr. David. I remember one of his kids, I told him, now get it straight, I'm not, I'm not Mr. Carr. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell him? I was, I was mad like he first of all, I knew he was going to run to school again. So I was struggling. I was struggling to get through all of these things. Right? And he looked at me, I said, yep. That's what happens when you don't do and you. This is what happens when you don't do and you what you're supposed to. Uh -huh. And he was shocked. I said, "Yeah, I'm telling you the truth." That's what I told him. I said, "You you got rid of Mr. Cobb, so this is what you get." <laughs> <laughs> he was shocked. The little teachers were shocked. And I'm looking at them like, "What's wrong with you guys? You Open up your mouth. Don't be abetting this kid." And I'm I'm telling you that you talk about a piece that surpasses understanding. Now. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think my little lecture kind of it, it helped him up. Yeah. Form of love, but he had to get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and that's usually all they need is just a little, mm -hmm. little bit of good attention, not bad attention. Mm -hmm. but, that, but that whole idea of in the middle of, in the middle of a storm, isn't that where the disciples were? In the middle of the storm. Now, um, th the interesting thing about that whole story is Jesus said something to them before they even got into the storm. He said, let's go to the other side. Now, Jesus said, we're going to the other side. We're going to the other side. Mm -hmm. Here comes the storm. <laughs> Here comes the cat. And it wasn't just any storm. It was a storm like a hurricane. I don't know if anybody ever been in a hurricane. No. I've been in one, too. I, and let me tell you, when that wind <laughs> gets to blowing, that was that'll shake your faith if you was out on that ocean, because those waves are high, and then the water's coming down the water. So I can understand why they was probably a little afraid, or more than afraid. They're fearing for their life. But Jesus had said, "Let's go to the other side," and and he addressed their faith. you oh ye of, of little faith then he said to the storm be quiet because I don't know if you've been in a hurricane but it's loud that wind is blowing so hard it's loud the 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 sound of the wind alone will will make you fearful not to mention how it's tearing up stuff. Just the sound of it blowing past the buildings. And Jesus said to that noise, be quiet. Peace. 
Be quiet. Just stop it. Just stop it. Which is what every therapist wish they could say to their their client. Just stop it. <laughs> but it's not not that easy. But I said that to say that when you um, have your your faith in what the word says, then regardless of the chaos and the storm and the things that come after your peace, mm -hmm. you exercise your faith, then you can have that peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding your mind and guarding your heart. That means this peace has the ability to regulate your thoughts. This peace has the ability to manage your emotions. It guards your, your mind and it guards your heart. Protects your thought patterns and protects your feelings so that you don't become undone. Because the word irene means to pull together or to tie together. So you don't become undone. Jesus said, or, or the word of God says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Peace and trust go together. Trust and faith go together. So when you're putting together the the recipe or the formula for peace, you has to have trust and faith. And we won't even get into the other part of the formula, which is faith without works. See, so you got to have, there's something that you have to do after all of that, too. which is pretty much walk into peace. And then now we extend peace to others because we know how to experience it. We know how to be whole. We know how to be complete. We know how to be well. We know how to not be deficient. I want to declare to you tonight that Holy Ghost lives in you. You are complete in him. You are not deficient as pertaining to godliness. You are not deficient as pertaining to the fruit of the spirit. You have all of that. Every single one that's named in Galatians, you have. You have love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness. You have it. Self-control. You have it all. You are not deficient. You are complete in him. Now, we just have to walk in it. That's the challenge. That's the challenge. But from a mindset and from a faith standpoint I want to let you know you're not deficient you have peace you have it you have joy you have patience uh, I, and I, I want to be careful but I would say you have it it's not necessary to pray for it. Even though I know some people do. And it's if, if you feel like you got to pray for it, then hey. But I'm telling you from my standpoint, if you have Holy Spirit in you, which I've taught, he comes with the full package. You are made complete in him. And when Holy Spirit comes, he comes and he brings peace and love and joy and 
patience and gentleness and kindness and self-control. He brings with him all of that and puts it in you. You just have to exercise it. You have to use it. And it will be tried. Because how do you know how much patience you have? Until it's been tried. How do you know how much peace you have? Until the chaos and the drama presents itself. How much, how do you know how much joy you really have until you've been in situations where there's a lot of sorrow and disappointment and you've had to show joy? How do you know how much love you have until you've had to use it with forgiveness and get rid of bitterness. How do you know it unless it's tried? And then the Father prunes you because he wants you to bear much fruit. Not just more fruit, he wants you to bear much fruit. That's his requirement. So we go through it so we can have more patience. Because you, just when you feel like, man, that's it. <laughs> I have no more patience for that. And you realize, I get, I do. <laughs> I do. I didn't think I did, but I had to exercise just a little more because if I didn't, y'all be calling the police on me. <laughs> so I had to use some more patience that I didn't even know I had. I got pushed to the limit and went past the limit. What did you used to say, Miss Lee? <laughs> Her kids would get you right to the edge and go, boop. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, that's um, some of this about peace. Um, I want to uh, maybe begin to discuss as we move forward uh, peace that brings joy. Um, how we can seek peace to make peace. That's that's a, a dynamic. And uh, also, lastly, um, uh, how we can have peace in the times of trouble. What was the second one? The second one is uh, seek peace to make peace. Because it says, as, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Well, as much as it depends on me, sometimes the all don't want to be peaceably. <laughs> so, so how much, you know. And so now we, when we get into this, I want to make sure that we begin to understand that peace and trust go hand in hand. And now, uh, d does anybody ever um, was here when I taught on trust? And I always say trust is not trust is not trust until it's warranted. Everyone say I trust, but you don't really trust until you have to. <laughs> and I give the example of, you know, when um, uh, that exercise where. You, someone stands behind you. Travis. Yes, <laughs> I did it with Travis, and you said, and I go, I trust you, Travis. I trust that if I fall back, you're going to catch me. <laughs> and I did trust him, mm -hmm. but I didn't really need to use that trust until I got past that tipping point. Mm -hmm. And once I leaned back and got past that tipping point, <laughs> and that fear gripped me. At the same time, fear and trust was together. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever been there? Mm 
Yeah. Where, where, mm -hmm. That fear and that trust, I, I've never, and I'm going to do some research. I, why is it that when you have to trust, fear is right there? Mm -hmm. Because uh, some people will say, I trust him, but don't take your eyes off of him. <laughs> <laughs> we did an exercise, Julie and I did, and we had to trust the person to guide us across the room. She failed at guiding me only because she didn't trust herself. I was trusting her to just not let me go into anything. Mm -hmm. So I just took off walking as fast as she goes, slow down, slow down. Because she didn't trust herself to, to, guide get, you. to guide me the right way. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. That's what Peter was. Yeah, huh. Yeah. She trusted me to guide her. But she didn't trust herself to guide me. I'm just walking across the room. Wow. And it's it's that fear and trust at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because trust you have to let go. Mm -hmm. You literally have to let go of your of whatever that that fear is. You should be vulnerable. You do. You you really do. And at that tipping point is where you make that decision to trust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's when it's needed. Mm -hmm. And after that, like the surrender. Yes. Like the surrender. Yeah, then you, you're almost forced to be at peace then. <clears throat> it's like whatever. Once I get past this tipping point, you better catch me. <laughs> 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 yeah, that'll upset your feet. Any other questions about this? This what we're talking about? I know, huh, Miss Joy? It, it is a lot. It's a lot in a little bit, but it's a lot. Um, because we're living in a time now where with everything going on around us, we got we got to have peace. And, and not as the world gives. We have to experience this peace to where we're not deficient. To where we can actually say to one another, Shalom. I'm complete. And, and when we greet one another, we're saying, may you be complete. May you be whole. May you have everything you need. May you have everything you need. And if you have the Lord, you have everything you need. Mm -hmm. It's just realizing it. Interesting thing, I'm gonna let you go. Um uh one of my one of my daughters is really going through a time and she told me that for the last few days, the only song that's been in her spirit is everything to me. My song, everything to me. My comfort, my healer, my shelter. And I was kind of shocked. Was, and, and she was like, yeah, that's the only song that's in my head. And, and I just thank the Lord because what it's saying is that you, everything that I need is in the Lord and now that's being run over in her mind now. And it's designed to keep her or put her at a place of peace. Mm -hmm. If she can believe it. If she can have faith and trust it. So um, I, I, I want that for you all. Is when the storm rages, know that the Lord is your shepherd. And because the Lord is your shepherd, you have everything you need. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that, Chris. I know you're getting ready to start back at school, but yeah. remember. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Because the Lord is a shepherd, you have everything you need. Yes. Everything you need. Remember that, Mr. Henry, no matter what they say on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I speak through it. <laughs> you have everything you need because the Lord is your shepherd. Yeah. 
Have you been deep sea fishing before? Out in the bay? No, sir, and don't plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. No, thank you. No. <laughs> you know, I, I take that back. I have been deep sea fishing once. <laughs> Did you lose your breakfast? I was with my dad and okay. my uncles and um, yeah, that wasn't my deal. We had a good it was hot. It was hot. Um, I yeah no, nope. Oh. I could eat it though, but I <laughs> catching it nope nope. <laughs> man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> Amen. Let's pr let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word tonight. We bless you. We appreciate you. We give you glory and honor. God, we thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding that will guide and guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Thank you for being our shepherd and helping us to realize that we have everything that we need to live peaceably, to experience your peace, to be led by the still waters and the, the green grass all of those things lord god that you provide for us spiritually and naturally so god we extend our faith tonight believing and trusting in you thanking you for that peace in jesus name amen amen, amen. thank you again oh you're welcome